Welcome to Investing 101, Lesson 4, Bonds, Cash, and Real Estate. In our last lesson, we talked about the first of the major four asset classes, stocks. Now we'll talk about the remaining three, bonds, cash, and real estate. Wicked. Bonds, or fixed income investments, essentially allow you to loan money to a government or corporation in exchange for interest payments. When you purchase a bond, you'll receive a set percentage of interest each year, known as the coupon rate, until the bond's maturity date, at which point you'll be paid back the entire face value of the bond. For example, if you bought a $1,000 five-year bond with a coupon rate of 5%, you would receive $50 each year for those five years and then be paid back the $1,000 when the five years were up. Two factors play a major role in determining the coupon rate of a bond, credit quality and the length of the bond. Essentially, the greater the risk that a company is going to default and be unable to pay the bond back, the higher the coupon rate will be. Well, that's the real trick, isn't it? And it's gonna cost you something extra. Similarly, the longer till the bond matures, the higher the coupon rate. The least risky and therefore lowest paying bonds are U.S. Treasury bonds, which can be bought directly from the government at treasurydirect.gov. The most risky and therefore highest paying bonds are called high yield bonds or junk bonds. What a piece of junk! These bonds can carry even more risk than stocks because they're usually issued by companies that have a high risk of bankruptcy and therefore might not be able to pay back the bond at all. Bonds can vary greatly in length, all the way from six months to 30 or more years, but they're best used as short to medium term investments with a time horizon of one to five years. The next major asset class is cash. This refers not just to the money in your wallet, but also any money in checking accounts, savings accounts, or money market accounts. The chief benefits of cash are its liquidity, which means it can be easily exchanged for something else, and the fact that there is little to zero risk in the short term. However, because cash usually has a zero or very low return that's usually outstripped by inflation, it loses value over time. There are a variety of online high yield savings accounts, which currently offer returns of about 2%, but even this barely keeps up with inflation. So cash is best reserved for emergency funds or for very short time horizons of less than a year. You must be quick. The last major asset class is real estate. Now anyone who owns part or all of their home has an investment in real estate. But there are also people who buy properties for the purpose of flipping them for a profit or using them as a rental property. Instead of buying individual properties, you can also invest in real estate through REITs, real estate investment trusts. REITs are bought and sold like stocks, and investors receive payments of rental income similar to how stocks pay out dividends. REITs allow investors to spread their risk across many different properties instead of having all their assets tied up in just a small number of them. Real estate has much more short-term risk than bonds or cash, as the market can occasionally crash, as it did in 2008. Therefore, real estate is best used for medium to long-term time horizons of five plus years. In our next lesson, we're going to talk about the importance of asset allocation and diversification. How to allocate your investments across all these different assets and how to be diversified even within each asset.